Hey, Nicola, how's it going? Uh, hi, Reed. Hi, Reed. All good here. And you? Doing very well. Uh, happy Wednesday. Thanks for uh, joining on this week. I know it's a few days earlier than I normally do, but as I was mentioning in the chat, Bell, I'll be out of town uh, tomorrow um, for a user group down in Portland and then uh, San Diego Friday. So I still wanted to actually get a, get a live stream out this week. And I'm excited on this one because I think it's going to be a fun uh, topic and I think conversation around the community in general, which is uh, obviously like a, I think that I'm a large part of it, certainly with these streams and then um, also just being a, a part of the MVP program as well. Um, uh, and a lot of the community involvement with uh, <laughs> exactly the thing that I'm doing tomorrow, which is the meetup group and doing a local presentation and everything as well. So I think this is going to be a, a really uh, fun next hour that we're going to have. Awesome. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting me. And yeah, I also looking forward to it. And I'm sure that it will be interesting. Yeah, um, for uh, for yourself, if you want to give a little bit of an introduction, give the people on the channel a chance to get to know you. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. Uh, so uh, I'm Nikola. So I'm originally from Belgrade uh, in Serbia, but I live in Austria for last uh, almost six years in a beautiful city, small city of Salzburg. And uh, mm -hmm. that's the reason why I'm using this Data Mozart nickname uh, because everything in Salzburg is, uh, you know, it's Mozart here, Mozart there, everywhere. Uh, yeah, th this is a uh, birth birthplace of, of uh, this big composer. And uh, yeah, I took his last name as part of my nickname. Uh, yeah, as you said, uh, I'm trying to, to share as much as possible through my blog and uh, also active on, on, I'm also active on those social media uh part of mvp data platform mvp program and uh yeah so i'm coming from a relational databases background uh used to work with this traditional bi stack mm -hmm. sql server analysis services multi-dimensional integration services reporting services and so on and yes since 2017 i started to to play around with power bi and now i'm mostly working with power bi deals with some Microsoft Data Platform other uh, offerings, but mostly Power BI. Excellent. Yeah. I mean, I, I've uh, definitely come across and um, in, enjoyed whenever I see a new post or other uh, thoughts that you, you have in some of the blogs that you write. Uh, you know, very, you're very active on Twitter as well. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to, you know, whenever I find something that I think it's, it's interesting, I try to share this with, uh, with others as uh, I know how much this helped me and it still helps me when I, for example, watch yours and Daniel's videos or, of course, uh, SQL BI guys uh, and, and Guy in a Cube and so on and so on. Uh, yeah, so uh, we already started talking about community and uh, yeah, so we, we are all here to, uh, in my opinion, to learn and share. So share what exactly. we've learned as that will obviously help someone else also. Yep, I'm looking forward to it. Um, but yeah, like uh, from from a broad perspective, do you want to give a uh, kind of a little overview of uh, what do you want what you want to talk about, uh, what we're going to be discussing, and everything today? Sure, sure. So uh, I would like first to maybe to share uh, my experience uh, of becoming part of this uh, community and why I think that uh, this community uh, really rocks. Uh, in uh, different aspects of, of, of meaning of that word. And uh, I also want to provide some uh, perspectives from other guys from community because I asked a question on Twitter like a few days ago uh, because I wanted to find out what others think about Power BI community. And uh, I got some interesting responses. So I would like to, to share uh, with others, with you, of course, and with others, and maybe to discuss a little bit about it. Yeah, Perfect. So I think that, that'd be great. That's the plan. Yeah. Yeah. Where Where do you want to start? Uh, um, I, I know we we talked about there is a kind of a little epiphany that you had uh, through Kurt um, th that you were considering. I uh, wanted to chat about. We could start there. We can uh, wh wherever you'd prefer, kind of within the, the the context of the community. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I I would like to share my experience how I how it started uh, regarding community the community for me, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, then we can we can uh, also check if. Uh, there are some other questions or something like this we can uh, also uh, yeah open discussion for for other guys and uh, uh, other folks and uh, yeah maybe maybe discuss uh, those questions okay. yeah so for me it started like uh, so uh, pre-pandemic time uh, yeah I was attending a local uh, event here in Austria SQL Saturday Vienna 
and that was uh, an opportunity, you know, to learn something. But uh, I would say it. Uh, yeah, this pandemic is obviously a, a very bad thing. But if one good thing came out from this, it's an opportunity to connect and to learn. Uh, yeah, uh, in the way that was practically impossible uh, before that. So, as I said, I was uh, attending those local events. But yeah, uh, once pandemic started, uh, the, uh, every, everything switched to virtual. And uh, yeah, basically you had a chance to uh, I don't know to listen to uh, one day to Mark and tomorrow Chris Webb, uh, next day someone else. I don't want to to uh, omit someone, but uh, uh, that basically opened a whole new perspective of learning and of sharing uh, uh, knowledge that that uh, we got. Uh, approximately at that time I started blogging. Uh, yeah, the main motivation was that I was keeping forgetting things that. Uh, I guess so all of us are uh, on the same page with that. Uh, so after uh, you solve something, after a few months, you get similar problem or the, or the same problem and you forgot how you solved it and you Googled it again and, uh, and so on and so on. So I started a reminder uh, to my future self uh, about some things that, that I uh, faced uh, previously. And then after a few months, I started to share those blog posts uh, uh, via LinkedIn. Uh, first, uh, I didn't have a Twitter account uh, at the time, and uh, I saw a lot of positive comments from the people. Uh, yeah, that helped them to to solve their problems and so on and so on. And that's how I started to build my network and uh, start networking with people, commenting. You know, there were some comments. Okay, can you expand on this or can you explain more on that, and so on and so on. And that's how I got involved into a community and. Uh, in the summer of 2020, so I, yeah, I was convinced by, uh, yeah, my fellow countryman and uh, he's also a data platform MVP, uh, Miloš Radivojevic. Uh, he works with SQL Server, so he convinced me to submit for this new Stars of Data conference. And mm -hmm. yeah, I was, you know, reluctant. Uh, I, I was like, no, okay, I, I'm good at writing, but yeah, not at speaking. But I decided to to go this way. And yeah, that uh, literally opened the door, uh, widely opened the door for for uh, 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 entering the community and starting to engage more with other people from from community. And yeah, that's how it started. And from there, uh, I tried to pick up as much as possible and also to share as much as possible from what I learned uh, uh, during this journey. So. Basically, that that's how I would like to. Uh, I I wanted to start this conversation as, uh, yeah. Basically, yeah. that that's that. In short, the story of getting involved and, uh, uh, yeah. I very that, much. That, that's, I, that's, I, yeah, so sure. so I very much align with the idea of uh, definitely like blogging and other stuff because I I refer to my own content plenty. Uh, there's so many times where I've gone back to articles and videos that I've done to be able to reference that later. Like, oh yeah, that's right. That's how I do that. Like, so it, it's, it's a way for me to take notes for myself too, in a lot of ways. Um, and that, you know, I, I'd say like that's, that's at least a, uh, one fourth of the, the reason I do a lot of that stuff is, is notes later on. Or if anybody, you know, like a client needs to ask me, hey, how, how do I do this? You know what? Here's a video I did two years ago on exactly what you need to ask. Just go watch this video. You don't even need to like pay me for consulting. I already have this archived that you can just watch the video, open the file, and then figure out how to do that for free. There you go. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And basically, uh, that way, uh, you're building your own CV. So, uh, yeah, when someone comes to you regarding uh, some job opportunity or something like this, uh, as you said, you can just point them to, to your blogs, to your videos. And, uh, yeah, basically, that, that's uh, that's uh, that's your CV in some, some kind of way. So... Uh, Producing content is one uh, aspect of being part of community, of course, but there are many more aspects, uh, uh, sure, that uh, that are not related strictly to producing content, but also, yeah, I know a lot of people who are not blogging and uh, not creating videos, but they are very active, for example, on those uh, Power BI community forums, helping people solve problems. Uh, yeah, 
who knows how how much how, how many times I found solutions there, and uh, the, these the, these are also important aspects of community. So it's not just about producing content. It's cool. It's it's yeah. It's nice, and uh, uh, people like you, I don't know me or, or some others, are enjoying that. But there are also uh, uh, many uh, many 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 uh, great people, many great members of the community that are uh, active on those forums and, mm-hmm. and helping mm-hmm. people solve real life real life problems. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm multitasking a little bit. Like for some reason the. Is the 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 internet gods are a little grumpy today, and the this, the stream is occasionally buffering oh. for people tuning in. So sorry about that, folks. The I, I'm hardwired and everything, and I also reset both my router and my my modem every morning to actually avoid that. But unfortunately, when you're on shared a shared internet with a building, there's there's only so much you can actually do about it. But I am hoping that it, it the buffering gets a little bit uh, better. Uh, but apologies for any like glitches from that. Um, but yeah. Uh, um, you know, for to a lot of what you said, the um, I don't know about you, but I think a big thing for me is the I some of my the things that I've gotten the most value out of is uh, the the feedback from actually sharing uh, information and and helping stand up individuals, teaching people. Like I never thought I would be a teacher uh, or or doing any type of like community involvement or presentations or certainly be considered an expert by individuals. Uh, you know, ten years ago, but now it's probably my favorite part of the job. Like I love developing, uh, but I would also say that. Um, you know, it's not nearly as rewarding as it is to, uh, you know, to be able to, to hang out with a room full of people and then at the end uh, have a lot of them just be very like, happy and thankful of like the, the information that they were able to learn, you know? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I completely resonate with that. And uh, yeah, say, say it was similar for me a few years back. Uh, yeah, I would say you're crazy. Uh, yeah, I, I'm teaching people no way. But uh, yeah, now it's, it's uh, as you said, it's part of, of your yeah, part of your everyday life and part of your job. So, yeah, I can resonate with that. And uh, uh, Ben mentioned in in chat, and that's a great uh, a great point. The willingness of so many people to be approached for questions is amazing. That's exactly one of the points I, I wanted also to to emphasize. You literally, if you have some problems or some mm-hmm. issues mm-hmm. or some uncertainties, you you're not sure how to do something. You just simply, yeah drop the message on Twitter and yeah, in, in I don't know, in a few minutes, uh, yeah, you, you get uh, answers from really competent people. So people you can trust that, that, that will help you to, to find a solution. So that's, I think that's the most, the most amazing thing, uh, about Power BI community. Don't know for others, but for Power BI, it's, it's really like that. So, exactly. For example, I know, yeah, month ago, uh, I was, working on optimizing some direct query uh, uh, report and uh, was not sure many distinct counts, uh, so on and so on, 70 million rows. And I was not sure, yeah, uh, what is the best way to to, to, to go? And then I dropped a message on, on Twitter and I got like, I don't know, 15 responses in the matter of half an hour. And uh, yeah, that completely opens you another perspective that maybe you, you never thought about. Absolutely, and I'm I'm reading like some of the other ones uh, from from Matthias, and I think also in a minute, if you have some good resources, you maybe want to show of like uh, places to go for conversations in the community, uh, both for 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 conversations and also for resources. I think that would be great to dig into as well. Um, yeah, so let me actually pop this up. Uh, Matthias was commenting that uh, there seems to be a professional honor code that questions are to be answered, problem to be solved within the community, and I, I definitely uh, agree on that. I, I I really do think that there there is a for the most part a a good mutual level of respect for, uh, from people sharing um, both both providing answers uh, and also asking questions because they're just aware of the, the time that's involved for, um, for, for for providing that content and feedback. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, that that's really. <laughs> I I would say maybe it's not professional honor code, but looks like that. <laughs> Definitely. There and yeah, it, you know, I will say there there are other times that I know like. Uh, Back when I answered a lot more questions in the Power BI community forums, that there's there's the individuals who have, ask a really short question, and I stopped actually responding to those because the the same individuals who would ask a really short question with no screenshots, no files, like, oh, I'd love to help. Could you provide some more information? How are you not able to figure out from the the brief little question that I yeah. posted exactly what the answer to this is? Like, all right, you're like you're 
you're you're you're getting uh, angry that I'm <laughs> asking you to elaborate. Yeah. So, but yeah. yeah. Uh, but now I just kind of know like uh, I think Matthew Matthew Roach, um, you know, uh, one of the cat team members at Power BI, he had a great question about like, garbage in, garbage out, and has a great. I think him or somebody else wrote a really nice blog post on how to ask a good question on the community. He, it was him, yeah. It, it, yeah. It's a great blog post. Yes, exactly. It's and like, you know, include post. the screenshots and files and this and that, but it, it just it beautifully articulates all of that. Actually, I was going to say, if you want to hold it up while I can continue to mention it, uh, I think that was probably one of my favorite articles that I forwarded to everybody. Like, this should be an absolute read if you want to ask questions on the forum. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll, I'm trying to, to grab this, uh, the... Yeah, is it, can you search specifically? Uh, just go to go to his website. Mm -hmm. SSBI Polar, yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. There it is. I'm gonna flip over to it now that you're on his page, um, and turn this off. But yeah, he uh, for the if if you aren't familiar with him, uh, for the people tuning in right now, he's he is one of the uh, 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 part of the the Power BI Cat team, the customer customer advisory team. Um, and I know Cat team is redundant because T is already for team, but he uh, pretty popular and uh, t tweets a lot on Twitter and writes a lot of uh, posts. But uh, he is very good, I think, adamant on people being active in the community as well and very supportive of that. A very honest individual. Exactly. I, I, act I actually will say that just as a, as a quick teaser, I was he's moving in about a, m a month um, outside of where near where I am near me in Redmond, and he loves swords if you're familiar with them. So. I actually recorded about three, two hours of video with myself, him, and uh, Will Thompson, who's uh, also mm -hmm. related to Power BI, and we we have video footage of us uh, actually um, do, doing sword practicing and, and hacking stuff apart uh, a bit. So I'll be posting that video to my channel soon with Matthew. Yeah, that that's also they are also they they are uh, on the one side they are part of the of the Power BI team. Uh, on the other hand, they are also very active in community, uh, uh, helping a lot and. Uh, yeah, always, also, always, always uh, happy to assist. So mm -hmm. that's also another another point uh, 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 to emphasize that. Uh, yeah, whenever whenever I reached out to someone from them, I also uh, I, I never got you know uh, uh, no as an answer. So it's matter of time sometimes, of course, uh, related to to their uh, regular jobs and everything else. But in the end. Uh, they they are always here to to assist and help. I can't find this uh, exact blog post, but I'm sure that he wrote this uh, about uh, asking the right question. Let me. Uh, yeah, if you wanted to, uh, like, I can actually see if I can find it. If you wanted to, to speak to something else, but one of his other articles also, mm -hmm. which which is really nice, is just the <laughs> never stop asking stupid questions. Uh, yeah, exactly. It, and this yeah. one, the one of the newer one, one of the newer uh, uh, articles mm -hmm. on building expertise. So he explained how to get an expertise uh, in cooking, how he got expertise in cooking, but it's applicable to any other, literally any other activity. So I strongly suggest to, to read this article. It's, uh, uh, it's really useful. I'll drop yep. the link in the comments. Yep, you're an admin in there, so you, you can share links. Yeah, yeah. So, Perfect. Uh, yeah, it, it's really good, and uh, he explains different stages and different steps in this process of uh, of becoming an expert uh, in something. So he explained how he uh, became expert in cooking. But yeah, as I said, this is also very, very, very applicable on Power BI and all the other tech stuff. So exactly, definitely, Matthew has Matthew has uh, uh, amazing, uh, amazing posts, and it's always a pleasure to read. Yeah, so like, uh, let's dive into a little bit of, uh, I think, some some good resources. Uh, we, I mean, obviously Matthew's blog, but uh, in general, when to get involved in the community, uh, what are some pathways that you would recommend or, or like for people to continue or uh, to start their journey? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for uh, for people, yeah, I often get asked uh, this question, and uh, uh, I pulled my list of, let's say, resources that can be useful for someone that that uh, uh, who starts the journey journey on Power BI. So, uh, to everyone who are completely new, I strongly suggest uh, doing dashboard in a day. That's, uh, I think, uh, the easiest way to get involved, and it's free. And it's yeah, you you have something you have something to showcase after these four hours of of uh, work. Uh, after that, yeah, there are many great resources there it, it it's hard to list all of them uh 
because I would say uh, when people uh, when people get to get to a certain level of knowledge in Power BI, uh, they uh, want to specialize in some uh, certain uh, topics like administration or performance optimization, visualization, and so on. So for each of those topics, uh, there are there, there are great resources out there. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, what I like to read is Phil Simark's blog. Also, amazing, uh, uh, amazing amount of uh, useful things. So it's on dex.tips. Post in a couple links uh, as oh. well. Uh, you're welcome to. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. So for example, uh, a few of, of uh, my favorite blogs from Phil uh, on aggregations. So he has a, a whole series on uh, creative aggregations. So how you can uh, leverage different concepts. So it's not just uh, no, normal aggregations from Power BI that we all know. So it, it includes a little bit DAX, a little bit tweaking here and there, but yeah. it's uh, that's the reason why they're called creative aggregations. So strongly recommend to, to read. And uh, also for visualizing data refresh process, I think that we are all using his uh, his template, PBX template for uh, visualizing data refresh process to find uh, where is the bottleneck. So yeah, this one I can maybe grab uh, specifically. And uh, as, a, as just a quick little tangent, the, uh, uh, I'm super happy that Phil is now uh, down in Australia working on the CAT team. I'll, they, they've, they've absorbed a lot of people in the last couple of years and continue to, uh, but he's yeah. not done as many of the DAX puzzles since then. And like, if, if people tuning in, if you're not familiar, like he, he built like a, you know, like Zelda from the NES, he basically used SVG and a lot of DAX code and a matrix table uh, rendering each cell as like a part of a grid of like a dungeon. And he actually built like a dungeon maze. He's built Minesweeper. He's done... All sorts yeah. of crazy yeah, black games. magic. He has yeah, few games in Dex. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it's like uh, clearly it's not meant to do that, but it's just more of like, wow, like wh where did you get the fifty hours to <laughs> to build that? Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, exactly. I you know, I've I've at least heard him hint at the fact when I asked him if there was ever a new game coming out that uh, or or some some fun Dax puzzle. Uh, he he did say he was working on something, so I'm hope interested in hoping yeah, that, that uh, does come out. Yeah, he's almost done. Uh, yeah, uh, we had Have you seen him. It? Uh, yes, I saw the demo. So he he demonstrated like last month. Uh, he was a guest of Augustine and me. And the, we are running some data jazz jazz oh, shows awesome. uh, once once per month. And Phil was our guest, and he he showed this uh, newest game. He was working with Kerry uh, Kerry Kolosko. So she yeah, was responsible yeah. for designing and visualizing things. And uh, it's uh, like uh, guessing the. Mm -hmm. I don't know in English what's the what's the name for this game when you guess the right uh, 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 right shapes and right positions of the shapes. Uh, I don't oh, know. Oh, it's the, it's like the, it's the like mem mem it's well, I'm thinking of memory where you're matching cards together to to figure out like the two two matching Something pieces. Something like this, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. But I I don't, I'm not sure how it's uh, how it's called in English. So yeah, but uh, he he told uh, he showed us in the some little little things to, mm -hmm, to improve mm -hmm. and uh, maybe in the meantime it was in march so in, maybe in the meantime he finished this and we were also like when do you find time to build games in dax i mean <laughs> well yeah i mean there, there's a lot of stuff that other... i would love to do but i unfortunately do not have the time to do that since it doesn't pay the bills typically exactly exactly yep. exactly and it's it's not you know just something that you can build in a few hours so you really need to dedicate some time to to this Exactly, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Speaking about that, uh, uh, we touched this uh, with this topic uh, about engaging with uh, with the uh, uh, Power BI Cat team. As you said, they uh, they hired a lot of guys from community, and I think that this community spirit uh, also transferred there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, they're also they're also on all those events and uh, also active on Twitter. Uh, helping and uh, and so on, so that that's that's really amazing. Absolutely, and yeah, so the I I tried, I couldn't actually find the the other article specifically on the on. I'm actually going to ping Matthew though later today, so, and and probably post that in the description because I want to actually have that bookmarked at some point to send to people again. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it, you know, 
Can continue the, uh, the the community story. Like uh, I would also say, like for for people wanting to get more involved, not just asking for like uh, technical or troubleshooting questions. What are uh, what are some recommendations that you have to for people to connect uh, to like to, to network in a way? Because I mean that is one thing that's a benefit of a community. I certainly will say that multiple of jobs and opportunities that I've had in my life have come through having those 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 conversations or just or, or making connections um, so like both either online or, or in person what would you what are some recommendations that you have uh, for people to, to kind of um, have more of those opportunities for themselves yeah absolutely that, that's a great point Thank, thanks for bringing this up mm -hmm. uh, networking is uh, one of the, the the greatest benefits of uh, being part of community mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, yeah uh, I would say in person events uh, lets you connect more uh, uh you can connect uh, in a better way with with people so that's 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 for sure so last year i was in croatia for example mm -hmm. and uh, i met uh, a lot of people that they knew just you know from twitter and linkedin and from other virtual events we met in person we had a dinner together yeah we were chatting about all the stuff not power bi related of course not just power bi related and that's an amazing opportunity because you uh, meet people from different parts of the world. Uh, yeah, you 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 uh, you get an opportunity to mm. to ask them questions, uh, not technical related questions. Uh, you can ask them questions about career perspectives, uh, uh, about career change. Uh, I give you example from my uh, uh, from my point of view. So. Uh, I was thinking about switching be, uh, between a full-time job and uh, becoming a consultant. And I spoke with uh, one of uh, uh, our colleagues in Croatia. And after that, uh, when we spoke during that dinner, he told me some things. And then I came uh, after that, uh, I don't know, a few weeks after that, I wrote him a message. It's completely different when you know someone. Uh, you can ask him, or her or him, uh certain questions that you can't uh, ask uh in the other in the other circumstances and uh, for me that's the the greatest benefit of being part of community this networking part and uh, and uh yeah knowing people and uh, uh, uh interacting with them and uh helping them and of course uh yeah uh engaging in in, in every possible way Absolutely, and I, I think, as you mentioned, a, a, a lot of uh, opportunities are especially tied to in person. I mean, I, I can say that I've burned out a bit on, and I'm sure pretty much most of the tech world has burned out quite a bit on, on online stuff. Uh, to a degree, I mean, it's let me connect a lot. Like, I mean, the, the the amount of calls that I've done like this now with the live streams, I would never have been able to do nearly as many of these in person, or at the frequency of once a week, uh, certainly. But uh, those like side conversations and a lot of the other stuff that just comes from like having a coffee over in the corner and just and just having a discussion with someone um, doesn't come up absolutely at, uh, online. Like it, you, I've seen conferences try to do stuff where they have like the water cooler rooms or like the the you know hangout rooms and stuff. And but again, like you you can't if there's thirty people in there, two people can't like have a side conversation in that room. It's still disgusting exactly, in front of everyone. Exactly. Um, exactly. I, Interestingly enough, just as a quick tangent on that, I do know Zoom has done like, there's ways now if you're in like a, a group call where you can pop yourself out with someone into like an actual side call and then come back in. Uh, but it, it, it's just, you know, you're, you're, you're putting a, a, a bandaid on an on a issue basically rather than um, going to that. But uh, I will encourage uh, individuals like the, I think the, one of the number one things that really does... Uh, help advance that the, the networking is going to local local user groups uh, even if you're going to one where maybe the topic is something like well i already i already know about that like it's introduction to dax i'm already familiar with writing dax a, a lot of the time you're going there really to have conversations with people it is going there to, to exactly. actually connect to network and um i mean i i quite literally got one of the jobs that helped me get to where i was today from a conversation at a local user group where I had a chat with someone like hey you should come in next week like we should have a, a chat like are you you seem interesting. I might have like a position for you, and like that literally turned into an actual role. Um, I found a few clients that way, even as an attendee. Just, oh, like, what are you working on? Hey, I, you know, 
I can maybe help you out on that. Yeah, and always like, someone, yeah. someone mm -hmm. knows someone. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Exactly. That's the point of networking. So yeah, that's a great <laughs> point. And uh, I also encourage people to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, we we both read uh, Matthias's yes, comment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, you 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 you'll just get a lot of messages on, on Twitter and LinkedIn now from Matthias. Uh, wanted to ask you all the questions for him. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sure, Matthias. Yeah. Uh, I, and maybe it's be, the same for you. But what I what I usually say is the um, questions that I can pretty quickly answer or quickly Google and copy and paste. Uh, I usually answer those fairly uh, fairly quickly back to people. Two to three paragraph questions that are much longer, I will maybe skim and then think about if I want to answer it, but then that becomes like an iffy, like, uh, you know, all right, well, at this point, it's like, I'll kindly direct it, like, I, we offer hourly consulting for, for, the, for that kind of things, but <laughs> the, 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 I will see the, of all the questions, like, I, both, both are fine, and it's kind of human nature to almost, like, to kind of see how, how much you can ask for free before you, somebody actually asks you to build it. But if it's an actually if it's exactly. a if it's a Googleable question like um, uh, how do I enable report tooltips? If I could take your question, your exact question, and paste it into a into a Google search, and the top result is what I send back to you, th that should be something you I should mean, do first. Yeah, I can, yeah it, it's, exactly. I, I know you want to ask an expert sometimes, but I will always like take five seconds to just if it's a really really basic like feature question, Google it first, or at least say hey. Is this article that I found is this accurate? Uh, but if, if I'm sending you back the top link, which is the Microsoft Docs page article, back to it, then that that's one of those like, come on, man, like you you can you, you can do that yourself. But that's the you only do, time do, that I would say a you know when people pick me, that's the one probably the one time that it actually does bug me a little bit is I I, I love answering questions for people, but if you're gonna take someone else's time, you know, just to ask them a question, do a teeny bit of research on your own, and if you don't, you know, basically page one, if you don't find a, an easy answer on the first page of your Google results. Then that's the point where you maybe go to like uh, you know an expert and exactly. ask them, which exactly. is totally fine. Exactly. And yeah. if you have some specific data, let's say that uh, you can't, yeah, you can't find answers so so uh, easy, it's okay. And I always try uh, whenever I find find something challenging, uh, I always try to to help people. But as you said, uh, mm -hmm. when the when the question is uh, yeah first in the in the first five top results in Google, yeah, then why asking that question? I mean. Uh, yeah, so there, there, there is a website built for this, which I send to my friends sometimes. It's uh, it's called it's I forget the exact URL, but it's like how to Google it. So you take a question, you paste it into there, and it creates a gift. Show me how it, to Google or something like yeah, this. Yeah, it, it creates a little video of the of actually the Google search bar. Type it in the question and then go into the top result. But it plays like a little animation of that, to, like kind of basically saying you should have done this to begin with. So it's a nice way to like awesome. have a funny little joke to send back to them. Um, I, I've used that, uh, I don't use that with people asking me on, on LinkedIn, but with my friends who ask me a very basic question sometimes, like I send that back to them as a joke. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's cool, yeah. I, I need also to <laughs> to apply this trick. <laughs> yeah, cool. What are uh, some uh, yeah, the other... Go ahead, oh, you, it sounds like you yeah, had a thought, so ahead, perfect. No, I, I was just going to continue the conversation along, but it sounds like you already had another uh, thought in mind. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'm also following the chat, and uh, before uh, I come back to here, the one thing I also forgot to mention: uh, what's the power of community? Uh, just look at the number of external tools that are now uh, uh, in Power BI ecosystem widely adopted, uh, even by Microsoft itself. So uh, we are talking about. Yeah, people like I don't know Italians who who developed a lot of those uh, tools like uh, this Bravo and uh, and Dex Do and so on. Uh, Daniel for Tabular Editor, Darren for Dex Studio, Matthias for uh, for uh, uh, PBI tools. Uh, and and mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry if I forgot some someone, but uh, so those are people from community. Uh, so you see the power of of, uh, of the community through work of those people who, yeah, who in the end, Microsoft, I think with the, this uh, latest thing, I don't know who wrote this, uh, if it was Christian Wade or someone, uh, basically they included articles in the official documentation uh, that recommend uh, usage of tabular editor in uh, in uh, certain advanced model modeling. Yes, scenarios. it was, um, and I'll see if I can pull it up. It, it was Christian Wade. 
it was a Microsoft doc in the last couple of days that's basically how to do advanced modeling and uh, exactly. uh, their their support of like Doc Studio and everything. Yep. Yeah. So they're they're suggesting, literally suggesting, uh, using those external tools, and I think that's a huge win for for uh, 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 for community to uh, to contribute in that way. Yeah. If you want to pull it up for just a second on your on your screen, like just mm -hmm. just so we can quickly show, because I I actually really like any time they they show, uh, you know, because external tools are like official and unofficial at the same time, you know, because it is a separate company, but it's like it's supported and in, in built into that. So anytime Microsoft in their docs talks about that that is the best practice, I do think it encourages people to use that. Absolutely, absolutely, and that opens the door in some companies that are maybe you know this is not Microsoft, we are not using this. Now, uh, when you show them official documentation, that's I think it's a, it's a different perspective. Absolutely. SQL, uh, Matthias, yes. So your question is: uh, Is SQL BI the gold standard for everything? Uh, not everything. Uh, SQL BI, I would say, is the gold standard certainly for DAX. They, they've had some other courses over the years. I th it's probably three or four, three, four years old now, but they did at one point have like a, you know, designing a dashboard and report and Power BI course, which, exactly. which is That's pretty good too. That's what I wanted to say also. Um, but it, it's also pretty old at this point. I don't think they've updated it in quite a long time. So at, at this point, it was a great course for the features that existed four years ago, but now there's a ton of other stuff. I generally go to them specifically exactly. for, um, for like, I would say advanced DAX, uh, but also like people like Matt Allington, um, who also have a DAX course, but... I would say that's better for like someone who's just getting started and it needs a bit of a lighter version that still explains the core concepts but also doesn't get too technical. Everybody has a little cut of, of the stuff. Like I, I have a course on on kind of uh, you know, the art of possible in reporting and understanding all the features such as tool tips, drill through, etc. So there, there's a lot of good uh, good resources out there. Um, not too many where I would say I, they are the, the de facto. Uh, as far as like just understanding and Quite literally helping to drive the change with Microsoft of it. There is, they are um, the people to go to for DAX. Uh, probably MK Feldman and uh, Gil Revive before he switched over to Amazon, unfortunately. Uh, he, and you know, Ken yeah, Pulse and a few others Query. for Power Query. Um, and I, I'll, once you 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 start um, talking about a few people again, I'll, I'll drop some links into there. But I'd say there's probably about three to five people for every pillar of Power BI that I would exactly. recommend. Um, exactly. Melissa. Melissa Coates for for yeah, governance for governance, for, for governance and administration absolutely. yeah so I yeah. I'll, I'll let you speak to a few of these and I'm actually rather than just naming names I'll drop a few links into the chat now perfect perfect yeah yeah that's what I was uh, starting to talk about uh, 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 that once you reach certain level then you are uh, searching for the resources uh, uh, from the experts that are experts in the certain uh, areas of Power BI so as you said. Uh, SQL BI is definitely for DAX, uh, uh, for advanced DAX. Uh, I wouldn't recommend someone who is new to Power BI to go and and uh, read the definitive guide to DAX. I think they will be more confused than they will learn something. But uh, yeah, when you reach certain level, uh, definitely when you want to understand in depth how things work, that's the way to go. But uh, of course, as you also said, uh, this course on uh, dashboard design, uh, I would say there are better resources uh, in that area than this course. Let's put it Absolutely. that Absolutely. I think I dropped, yeah, Melissa Coates, Excel Guru, uh, BI Accountant, uh, all of those people that are in there. But Yeah. Oh, yeah. and uh, hmm. there's one one person who I would say is the queen of uh, accessibility. She... <sighs> um, uh, Megan Longoria. Thank you, yes. Because that, and I, I specifically want to call out Melissa and Megan. One of two reasons they're, uh, they're, uh, two women in in the BI space, uh, which, which is already fantastic, and they're also both they in both specialty amazing, yeah. both amazing, and in specialty fields which don't have a lot of people writing content on that. There's not a ton of people who I would consider like experts on governance and administration. Like I know about it, but I'm, I'm not an expert on it. Most people. Who are consultants like yeah, us absolutely. know about it, name, but they're, they're not I the. Yeah. And, uh, I can name Melissa and I can name Melissa and Ashgur Ashgur Gunderson also yeah, okay. who is working mostly with that. But th those are two people, uh, two two people, and uh, uh, not many people are, let's say, experts. We all know something, but uh, yeah, uh, I, I would say uh, 
yeah, Melissa is the person to go for for those kind of of kind of topics. Also, uh, Megan mm -hmm. for accessibility, definitely. <clears throat> yep, yep. She, I mean, she's basically the only person who really advocates for it uh, and pushes. Uh, she, she helped Microsoft, I think, add quite a few few features. The fact that we have our selection pane and now we have a tab order pane as well tab for order, people yeah. with accessibility keyboards. Like that got added, I think, partially because she was requesting it and, and advocating hard for it um, as well. So. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So there, there are, those are all people from community, and uh, all, they are mm -hmm. all doing amazing, amazing job. Uh, unfortunately, Gil is not anymore in the Microsoft space. Uh, he's in he's in Amazon now, but uh, his books on Power Query are still, I would say, uh, yeah, a great way to 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 learn to learn yeah, Power his Query and them. Data here we go. <clears throat> his I mean, and they're still pretty relevant. His book is only two years old. Something like this, yeah. Something like this. And the thing that I would actually think the, the um, uh, it's also a reason that they're better for books. Uh, just talking about content and community stuff. The for Dax and Power Query, they build upon each other. So for the most part, like once you write something about it, like that code, that practice isn't ever going to really be wrong. There might be a, a slightly more optimal way to write it in the future, but the other way will still work. Like, you know, Dax yeah. has syntax sugar as the, as a Marco and Alberto. Yeah, 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 yeah. They are so, changing, uh, yeah. you know, five years ago, you, you might have a measure that's this long. Now, they, now they, re, they add a new function, so it's this long. The other one, it'll still work. Every model that supports it will, because otherwise that's, you yeah. would not and ever. in the background, engine will yeah. work the same. So you exactly. get the same query plan and everything. Yeah. Yes. So, so your, your book has a lot more stain power. And it's also, it's, they don't enter it nearly as much. You read a book on the report layer. And how to use the format pane. I mean, as we know, the format pane just changed this month. So <laughs> yeah. those books so have is... very little stain power when it comes to that. And like that, that's a, there's a reason I've never written a book. Because I've asked, I've had a lot of people ask me, oh, you should totally write a book on like report design. The, the, the minute I take a screenshot, and like within a couple of months, that screenshot's probably going to be out of date. And by the time the yeah, book gets published, absolutely. this book will be out of yeah. date. I'll have like a three-month <laughs> window to sell this at best. And then it's immediately, so it's just not worth the effort. Uh, for for me to do yeah, that, yeah, yeah, and it's not easy. Uh, I was watching your stream with uh, with Marco and Alberto regarding creating content, and uh, as they as they said, uh, you can go and uh, and uh, record a new video again. Uh, you can easily change something in blog post. Uh, you can update the blog post, but once you write the book and publish it, that's it, game over. So you can't go and uh, and change something in the in the print book. So you you. Only you, uh, the, the only yep. thing you can do is to write second edition or something like this. But yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky for for those topics that are uh, uh, rapidly changing, like uh, design and then stuff like this and uh, user interface. I would say the whole user interface. Mm -hmm, it's really mm -hmm. tricky to to create something that that would last longer. Yep, and I I actually need to do an update on my course at some point. I still can't do that because of reasons right now. So uh, I'm hoping sometime early 2023, um, sometime next year, basically, I, I will finally actually update my course. But again, it, it it's really sucks from a report layer. Uh, for, for short videos, it's great because I constantly have new content to make. But if I'm actually doing a full course, it's a moving target to like have to constantly gut sections out of training content to replace it with a new video because the button that was here is now over here. And... Yeah, people need a. Yeah. I, I need to re-record it yeah. to show For, people. What formatting pain. Formatting pain is is enough. Just this one change is is complete. Is enough to, to yeah, to to update the course mm -hmm. and all the other materials. I mean, it's whole different change. Yeah. And I have a great question from. We have two Matthias's in our chat. Uh, um, Matthias, great to have you on. Uh, everyone is used to online presentations nowadays. Definitely. <laughs> Um, any tips for people heading back to in-person events, either as a presenter or uh, an audience member? Yeah, uh, Ben uh, Ben also asked uh, previously as a member of the community who has only done online PBI presentations, the thought of doing an in-person presentation mm. is very daunting. It's similar, I would say. Yeah, uh, if you want to address uh, similar. either. Yeah, sure. Uh, uh, well, to be honest, I don't have much experience with in-person presentations. But uh, for me, it was also challenging the first time I did. After all these online presentations, I did like, I don't know, 40 online presentations uh, before my first in-person presentation. So I would say uh, if you're, let's say, afraid uh, or you have some, uh, 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 
you have some you 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 are not sure how it will how it will go uh try to find some local user group uh those are all friendly people and uh, there are not uh a lot of them and uh, you're prob- probably present for i don't know 15 20 people uh you should not be scared that uh, i don't know in the audience you will see uh, marco and alberto or chris webb or someone if you go to a large conference there is a chance that you uh, get them in the audience so uh it's a good thing to to build your self-confidence uh, if you start with small and then uh, go gradually to 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 bigger, bigger events and bigger conferences. That's my opinion. That's how it worked for me. And uh, yeah, I hope that uh, uh, I still haven't been in person uh, uh, to those huge events like SQL Beats, like Past Data Summit and so on. But uh, for me, it worked that way. So starting from a local user group, then going to Data Saturdays and so on and so on. And uh, that way, mm-hmm. same as for online presenting, you are building your confidence. That's from a speaker's perspective. Uh, from audience perspective, yeah, go and enjoy. That's it. And uh, as Reed said, uh, yeah. networking, networking, networking. That's that's <clears throat> the, the the biggest advantage of in-person events. I'm sure. Yep. Yeah. And uh, local user groups certainly. I mean, meet meetup is a great location for that. Um, also, the, the the pug Power BI user group uh, ha- has a lot of uh, good resources for that. Power BI days. Um, and I can drop a few links in here yeah. in a minute. But the, the one thing that I'd say for uh, heading back to, to in-person events uh, or pre- presenting, uh, cer- certainly at them, is uh, local user groups are great testing ground. But I'd say by, I, myself and most people who are fairly seasoned uh, usually pre- uh, present a new topic at a local user group first. They're not going to go to a summit and uh, most of the time and yeah. present like a brand new topic for the first time ever. You have a smaller audience. Um, another thing, too, is if, like, a lot of them, uh, you might think like it has to be an hour, but it doesn't. Like I've, I've done a lot of local user groups where the, the host will maybe do like a, a month where they get like three people who each give a 20 minute talk. You can do a shorter one or even pitch mm-hmm. that idea to them. Hey, what do you think about maybe me coming in doing like a, a quick 20 minute presentation and then finding a couple of others to do that. And if they've not done that, most of them will probably find that to be a good idea. But then it's also less stressful for you because then you're, you're now only presenting like a much shorter little snack sized presentation rather than trying to worry that you're going to have to fill a whole hour you know uh, of space with that so you know, start exactly. small and, both and in the group size and the presentation size yeah exactly and the, the good point that you mentioned uh, uh, for new sessions uh, if you start small and uh, you get a feedback uh, you have a time to fine-tune the session for for the those let's say large events so based on feedback you get on those with, the, with this smaller audience so mm-hmm. I, I would say that's also plus for starting starting that way with with especially with new sessions exactly 100 percent pop that back down um but yeah i think the um one thing that i would encourage people to uh to do uh again is the uh just just check um check a lot of the the sites in meetup etc look look for those uh events a lot of them are are definitely going to be free which is really good for for the local user groups um and the the other thing to take away is the it, you know, if anybody ever like wants to, to volunteer to help like create an aggregate good site, like that's the one thing that actually I, I really wish that the community had was like one master site that just had everything, you know, there was just like a, a nice aggregated list that scrubs the internet that shows all like Power BI related events. Uh, I've seen a couple of people try it over the years, but unfortunately there, I don't have personally a master source to go to. I don't know if you've come across any good data source for not a there were of some that, things yeah. created by kevin arnold i think uh, mm. he was collecting data from but it's hard to collect everything uh, there are so many uh, uh, events those, yeah. so many virtual events uh, that are not uh, on meetup or uh, event bright for example they are organized i don't know uh, uh, through sessionize or something like this and it's hard to grab all the data yeah i would also like to have some centralized place to to find uh yeah all, all that we need but yeah it's it's as far as i know it, it doesn't exist at this moment yeah and i mean similar i think uh matt allington at one point for mvp has had like a little power bi report where people could people could put it links in an excel file which then got refreshed and imported uh which had like a little map and a, a nice list but that also means the community had to maintain Someone it and, needs and to... drop those into there yeah, yeah. 
Uh, I will say I'm yeah, a bit yeah. spoiled that I, I'm part of like a, you know, BI professionals, you know, Slack group for MVPs, and we have an events page that people do drop links into there. But again, that's that that is relying on us each other to you know throw links yeah. into there. So fingers yeah. crossed, that maybe at it's some kind point of closed it comes group. up. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I was, you'd, I would hope yeah. Microsoft, and maybe that's a, a wink and a hint to them, like, hey. <laughs> It'd be really great if you could like collect community events and post them somewhere and have uh, like some kind of a community manager manage that on the community forums. But yeah, that that that, that would be awesome. That would be awesome and very helpful for people mm -hmm. who are searching for maybe specific topic or specific presenter. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's easier to find. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So we, we haven't gotten uh, to it yet, thing... but. I was going to say is like, uh, we haven't gotten to Kurt's question. So like, I don't know if that's what you were going to bring up, but otherwise, uh, I'll, yeah. at some point I, I would love to talk about that, that uh, idea as well. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Sure. Uh, so just to give, uh, to provide a little bit of context, uh, a few days ago, I asked on Twitter, uh, our community or uh, about their opinion, why our community is so strong and, and, uh, why it rocks and why it's helpful and, how. Uh, so on and so on. And I got some uh, interesting uh, responses. Most of them, of course, were like, yeah, we are the strongest one and so on and so on. But Kurt, uh, Kurt Buller, uh, uh, a guy who, uh, who is also a member of our community, he's also blogging, active on Twitter, uh, produces some really great stuff. Uh, I had a conversation yesterday with him and he sent me a message uh, which I wanted to share, uh, of course, because it uh, it, it opens completely different perspective. At least for me, I haven't thought about our community in that way. And uh, so uh, if you can just uh, share my screen. Yeah, it's here. Basically, it's a long message, but to, to cut the story short, uh, uh, he's afraid that, uh, yeah, our community can become like a bubble uh, uh, closing, uh, close uh, uh, between ourselves. So... Uh, to to uh, lose the touch with uh, outside world, and in that outside world are business users, uh, are uh, other people that are not parts of part of community. So he he's uh, scared that maybe sometimes he he wonders whether the MVP community itself can be at risk of forming an echo chamber, so away from more silent majorities majorities of users. And I think he made some really great points uh, here. Uh, I, I will ask him if I can share uh, this on, on Twitter or somewhere, or if yeah. he wants to share. But I would like also to discuss with other people from the uh, community uh, to hear their thoughts about uh, uh, these points. Because I think, at least from my perspective, I never thought uh, this way. But uh, he has a point, definitely. In my opinion, he has a point. He's in the ch uh, he's in the chat right now too. He's like, oh yeah, it's me. Ah, okay. <laughs> so <laughs> hi, Kurt. Yeah, there's Kurt. There you are. <clears throat> For people not familiar with him, yeah. I'd I'd recommend to check out his uh, his blog, Data Goblin. Uh, uh, I'm I'm also like in most people in the tech community, uh, quite nerdy, and uh, the fact that he has managed to integrate some like fun fantasy and D and D related things into a lot of his expertise is uh, is really cool. And he'll be on later this year uh, doing a uh, and presentation great session on, on, on visualization. Uh, RBI adoption. Yeah, exactly. He has so. a great session on RBI adoption. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So go and check. <laughs> yeah. So basically, yeah. The, the, uh, I think this is this is this is really amazing to to think about. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, for me, it was. Uh, I would say it was uh, uh, eye opener for for some things that uh, I need to reevaluate. Yeah, uh, uh, some thoughts. Uh, yeah, he, he he definitely has a point about about uh, some things here. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's in in my own way, it's one thing where like I, I do think it, it's easy to um, to create an echo chamber and continue to rely more and more on the people who are already established um, or stand up within that. Uh, I know from a few avenues like Power BI days that um, Jan uh, Molkins uh, kind of helped stand up and are now all over the place. Like one of their big incentives is uh, for both. Um, uh, marginalized individuals and uh, people who are not MVPs trying to find like new uh, and upcoming presenters like with new topics to use those and a couple of times that I've hosted a, Nor a Northwest edition in here I've, I've tried to find people to give an opportunity to speak for the first time with my live streams like uh, I usually a I ask for a lot of recommendations for individuals uh, to like to, that I can bring on that I, I don't know of uh, who are like outside of the my bubble of the community uh, both so I can meet new individuals but also give them a chance to the um, to 
present themselves into this platform. But I, I think that's very important to, like, you know, to to not rely too much on uh, the the uh, established experts or just established community, and continue to try to expand that bubble whenever you can. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And listen, what is happening uh, outside of this bubble? Exactly. That's also that's also important. Yeah. Yep, and then, you know, try to be on different social media platforms, as Matthias is mentioning. Like, who uses Twitter? Uh, apparently, Elon Musk uses Twitter because he just bought it for $46 billion. <laughs> but, uh, um, I mean, honestly, I, I didn't have a Twitter account until I got a business. Uh, same with LinkedIn. Is like, I, I know people use it for personal stuff. I mostly, it, it, it's a way for me to, to share content and, and occasionally thoughts and stuff. But it, it's entirely just for business for me. But uh, yeah, if, you are, me, if you are trying to do consumption of, like, new articles and posts, I would say be on Twitter and LinkedIn. Um, some individuals like me are on both and like do cross posting. I would say uh, there are quite a few others who are primarily in one versus the other. Matthew Roach doesn't post nearly as much on LinkedIn as he does on Twitter. Um, a lot of his Definitely, is, is, yeah. is his, his brain dump of thoughts, but quite a lot of those brain dumps are very interesting insights. So I, I do think collectively, if you can, you know, maybe a couple times a week scan both of those for interesting stuff related to Power BI or in, you know whatever your subjects are in tech. Uh, I do think you can actually learn and then uh, grow from like blogs and thoughts and, and other stuff. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, to, and you can find yeah. out about networking opportunities yeah. and uh, jobs and uh, yeah, the different different kind of uh, of engagement. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So social media is, I would say, very very important part of uh, uh, of becoming a member of community and uh, expanding your networking and expanding your uh, sites. Yep. And uh, uh, Kurt has a great point. A big part of it is the uh, the engagement system is where our community resides in social media. Uh, and it does, yeah, absolutely. It incentivizes engaging with things and people we already agree with, even if we don't realize. So it's good to push beyond that. Uh, and I, I would say that's a big difference between online versus in-person events, too. Is like the social media usually is, to a degree, a bit of a kind of a, a yes um, uh, funnel where it's a lot, you know, a lot of people have agreement for it. I'd say Twitter more so like, People just like to argue on Twitter. Uh, yeah, yeah. But yeah. the uh, I you know, noticed that. Yeah, well, and it, I would even say like between the two platforms, like I wouldn't say that that nearly as many conversations that I see happen on LinkedIn. There, it's more like professional and businessy opinions yeah. and counter opinions happen a lot more in Twitter threads. And like there have been some Twitter threads that I have gone through that I'm not responding to, but I'm just reading it. And like it's it's a back and forth conversation on like two opinions on how to do something or best practices and. So some of those get really deep and in depth, and like I, I end up learning from just from just reading that. So exactly, uh, exactly. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Same here, same here. And uh, but that's the reason, for example, why I'm not. Uh, uh, I, I'm reluctant to express my personal opinion on many things on Twitter because uh, people are, yeah, jumping, you know, into fire <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. easier than than on LinkedIn. I would say. Great question by Kurt, and I. Yeah. I think we'll do this and then wrap up here in, in a bit. But the uh, how, uh, how do we think COVID and lockdowns have changed community dynamics? Anything for the better? Anything for the worse? And why? Oof. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> it had pros and cons, definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about COVID, so for lockdowns. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it was different in different parts of the world. So someone is still in lockdown. Someone I like Scandinavia is free for a year. So let's let's talk about COVID generally. Uh, I think that it changed dr dramatically, and uh, this change will stay uh, even when we go back to per in-person events. Uh, uh, yeah, after two years of. Uh, one way of thinking, of doing things, of communicating, sharing stuff, and so on. I think this this is here to stay. So uh, these uh, online communities, uh, I think it will they, they will stay uh, even though when we when we back in person. That that's my opinion. I don't know, read what you think. Yeah, I mean, I I definitely think that um, it, it's it's had some benefits of creating more platforms and community. Uh, involvement online. Uh, I think it's also scared away uh, a, a few things from doing stand-ups again. I mean, like SQL uh, Pass uh, and, and um, everything that was doing SQL Saturdays, they they went belly up like almost instantly because they just 
they had to disband. I guess they had so many years of contracts uh, for event spaces that they just like they, they had to declare yep. bankruptcy and disappear. We now got data Saturdays from that, but like a lot of things disappeared um, that uh, pre-COVID existed that were really good for, for local stuff. Um, I do think that going forward, I, I think it's kind of like a pendulum swing. We, we swung far into the direction of, of doing like online only events. Now we're kind of coming back to it. I think we'll probably swing a bit to the other direction of people are just really going to like eat up for the next 12 months, a lot of in-person events and just, and, and milk this up. But I, eventually I think we'll come back to like a nice little a middle ground of a combination of both. But I do think that uh, hybrid, the tools, hybrid things, uh, things. The, hi the hybrids, yeah. Like uh, conferences are now doing hybrids. Yeah, where, I, think, like, I think that, yeah. that, that was working fine for SQL Beats, for example. And uh, yeah, I think that, uh, in-person events still uh, uh, mm -hmm. will be in place, of course, but uh, this opportunity to offer people who can't travel for whatever reason or that they don't want to travel, yep. uh, give them opportunity still to learn, to connect uh, uh, in this virtual way. I think that's, that's a completely fine way to, to proceed. Yep, absolutely. Um, and... I like the sequel bits uh, conference that I presented at last time. Like the, I was presenting to a room of people. Plus I was uh, also presenting to the online ones. I will say that I, I kept forgetting that there was like a camera and like, I had to kind of also try to address. Uh, I think I had a comment or two yeah. of like, Hey, we, we felt like, yeah, sorry, my bad. I'm just not used to like presenting to both at the same time. I do think that maybe they should put like a little person or a light above the camera to, to, to give you a <laughs> reminder, like a cutout cardboard of someone like, Hey, by the way, you have a virtual audience over here. Um, just because it's so easy to forget when you actually have a room full of people staring at you. Exactly. Uh, I, yeah. I think the yeah, technology yeah, has evolved a lot. Yeah, yeah. It's strange, but I think we will get a custom. In the beginning, uh, when we started presenting virtually, it was also strange. Uh, you don't mm -hmm. have anyone in front of you, so you're sitting in your in your room alone and talking to, to your screen, and that's it. Yeah, uh, it, it's different, but I think also for hybrid, after some time, yeah, we will all get accustomed to it. Exactly. Uh, I will say that uh, I think we're going to wrap up here in just a minute. If, there's, oh, if there were any other questions that you wanted uh, to ask either of us, feel free to drop that in um, now. But otherwise, like th this has been fantastic. I, I like the water cooler conversation uh, talks like this. It, uh, I certainly learn a lot. Um, it, it's great to be able to, to hang out and just uh, uh, get, get to know you as well over the last hour. And it, it's definitely been a lot of fun. And uh, I think I, I'm Thanks. leaving with a few resources as well, which is always nice to, to add. And hopefully the... A lot of the links we shared today have been useful for anyone looking to both uh, get out into the community a bit or to find some uh, good expertise resources. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. I'll, I'll pop this on. Yeah, it was fun. Funny. For me, all, it was also fun. And yeah, uh, yeah thanks <laughs> thanks for inviting me. And uh, I would like also to thank any, uh, everyone who joined. Yep, absolutely. And I, qu quite a few familiar faces uh, and a few individuals who both have been a guest on my stream before, uh, Ben, and then Kurt, who will be uh, coming up later this year. So uh, it, it's, it's nice to see a few of the other um, uh, fellow uh, community contributors in the chat. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, uh, Nicola, enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks again for coming on. And everyone else, Thanks. I will see you next Thanks. week. You have a great trip to Portland and enjoy <laughs> the weekend.